Um, okay, so welcome everyone to the poster session of Euro MPI 2020. Um, we have four posters in the session, and uh, we are um, uh, um, uh, have a time slot of one hour. And um, yeah, so um, the first poster that we wanted to present now, where did Atsushi go? Um, there he is. Um, It would would be Atsushi uh, son from uh, Riken. Um, Atsushi, are you available at the moment? Can you, I yeah. yes. Can you hear me? All right. Yes, we can hear you. Can you sh can you share your presentation? How can I do that? Um, you should have you. Andrew, I think you need to um, pass the the ball over to him. Oh yes, just a second. There you go. Oh, okay. You should, Thank you. you should get the share button on the on the bottom. So while yeah. Atsushi is setting up, uh, we have four posters in the session. So we uh, uh, we wanted to have a good um, also discussion uh, in in the session. As you usually have in post sessions, so um, uh, I'll try my best to um, keep up with questions that you can post in the Slack um, uh, or the chat. And um, yeah, with that, I want to hand over to Atsushi San, and uh, uh, he's going to be presenting on a report of the oh. international yeah, <laughs> survey. Okay, so I'm going to talk about the MPI International Survey. So the I am Atsushi Hori from Atrikian, and the George Poshika at the UTK and the Emmanuel Janu at India are also involved in this project. So the related works. So the there are some projects, uh, our surveys on the, the MPI usage, uh, some of them are questionnaire, questionnaire survey and some of them are investigating and uh, analyzing the, the statically, statical behavior of MPI programs or runtime behavior of MPI jobs. But he, here, the, the most of them are targeting to the high end MPI users and also the targeting uh, very regional MPI users. I mean, the, the, in a country or in a uh, users of using the, the some particular supercomputer or such kind of systems. So anyway, so the, the so I feel I felt that the, we need some more general uh, questionnaire survey, not targeting the high end users, not uh, targeting some regional local users, but the, the, the uh, yeah, yeah, so the, the we did, we did what we did is the, the more wider, broader scale, uh, broader and larger scale questionnaire survey. That, so that we can get uh, more statistically precise or deeper, we can get go get the, the deeper analysis result. And the, we are targeting the, the wider spectrum of MPA users from novice to experts. And also our target is not regional, I mean the worldwide. So, so, uh, so especially uh, we designed the, the questionnaire survey and we have some beta tests to uh, uh, MPI forum members or uh, NDA and we can CCS 
researchers. And it was started from the February 2019, and up until now, we got more than 850 participants and from the, the 42 countries and regions. Anyway, so, so here's the list of questions. Uh, we have only 13, 30 questions. So uh, here's the list of questions. And here's the list of countries, regions, and, and okay, so yeah. so here's the the participants profile. So the, this question asking the pitch fees are you what mostly working in? And the, the most users, most participants are writing the, the numerical applications or libraries, as you can see. So this is the, the overall, this is France, the Germany, Italy, UK, and other European countries, Japan, Russia, and US. So here's the uh, views, and those are the, the countries or countries and regions. Here, this graph shows uh, asking uh, the result of asking the question, what is your main occupation? Uh, these are small, but the, here, most of the participants are working at uh, university, universities or governmental institutes. More, uh, roughly about 80% independent from the, the countries or regions. And here, this question is how long have we been writing MPA programs? And here is, uh, no, this one is less than two years. Here, this is two to five years. Here, five to 10 years. This is uh, more than 10 years. Okay, so as I said, the, our, uh, the participants uh, includes no, novice to expert, right? So anyway, this is the rough the description of the, the participants pro profile. And he, this is a panel not a paper presentation. Uh, so the, the, here the list of topics, I already talked about the participant profile. So we have uh, six topics. So the, I'm gonna read out all of them. And could you write the number of those topics into the panel, uh, no, poster Slack channel, which you want to uh, uh, listen or discuss with me. Is that okay? So, okay, so the, the, this is the MPI implementation, and the, the second is the setting support. The third is MPI features, fourth is MPI plus X, and the alternative is. Uh, fifth is uh, learning and checking MPI specifications. And the last one is compat compatibility versus performance. Those five topics are my recommendations. So, uh, the, the, uh, the Mark Andre, which one uh, did you get some input at the Slack channel? Well, there's no uh, activity on the Slack channel uh, at the moment. Um, uh, let me check if anyone's raising the hand. Um, hand? Hand is awesome, okay. But I don't see anyone raising the hand. Um, so, okay. Um, okay. Uh, so then uh, I would choose, choose a topic um, uh, and uh, Although I would yeah. uh, uh, probably enjoy any. Um, uh, and uh, could you say something about features? 
Um, peaches. Peaches. <laughs> this is yeah. what's so, oh, okay, this one. Okay. Okay. Oh, no. So at the moment, oh, uh, at the moment it seems, uh, Sushi, that you're muted. I unmute you now. You have unmuted the, the host. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah, I'm now, sorry. now you're unmuted. Um, so uh, please, please re repeat the last last bit. Okay. So, so I'm going to talk about the, the MPA features findings. Some findings on the MPA features. So here's the graph. On the left side is a result of asking which MPA features have you never heard of. And this one is uh, the, the question of asking the, the what aspects of the MPA standard do you use in your program in its current form? Okay, so here in this graph, oh, it's, it's a little bit small, but the, from the left to right, the top three is PMPI, persistent dynamic process creation or something. And the fourth one is one-sided communicator, point to point, data types, collectives with the open MP. So as you can see, those three is that those are PMPI persistent dynamic process. Uh, the, the most, the least uh, known MPI features. Say roughly 50% of participants does not know yeah. about those features. Okay, so in mm -hmm. this question, they are asking the what aspects of the MPS standard is uh, using using standard from the left to right, uh, collective point to point data types with open MP communicator one sided PMPI. Uh, persistent, uh, dynamic process, and others. So, so here, those are the, the PMPI, persistent dynamic process. Here, PMPI, persistent dynamic process. So, those three features are least used, least known, Right. So, but the yeah. I, I checked, but the, those features were already introduced in, in MPI 2.2 almost one decade ago. Okay. Yeah. So, Next. um, with, with a uh, uh, sorry for 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 interrupting because we um I also have to uh, look at the schedule. So, um, what I think. Uh, um, presents an interesting question uh, here for on on the data you have here is that persistent communication is less known than one-sided communication, which already is sometimes uh, regarded as the the odd duck uh, um, in in the communication paradigms. And the the question would be, uh, are we doing something wrong um, in in terms of our uh, MPI education that people don't know that 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 um, maybe our our courses um, uh, don't uh, don't mention that for for PMPI uh, that that's a very specific tool topic um, but for pers right. pers that persistent is less okay. known than than one sided surprises me uh, do you have any idea oh, there? really 
What do you mean? <laughs> so persistent, yeah. uh, it's, it's both. Persistent communication is less known than one-sided communication and uh, and effectively is also yeah. uh, yeah. less used. Um, so you have an idea on, on, on why that is? Do, don't we talk about persistent communication enough um, in, in our education? Uh, okay, so the, the, the so so I'm going to talk about the uh, uh, da, da, da. okay. So here's the question: What are you are your obstacles to mastering MPI? So here there's no obstacles. Uh, the answer of, of no obstacles uh, dominant, but the here in this question, there are lots of other answers. There are many people of answering the other uh, type um, wrote this. They have no time to run MPI, and the, some of them also said said uh, we need some guideline, performance guide guideline, implementation guideline, that kind of a thing, and also. Uh, here, they most of them are using online or internet documents while they are writing the, the, their MPA programs. Yeah, MPA standard is read by users, but the most of them uh, read the standard. Partly, partially, mm -hmm. not whole, not whole. Yeah. And also, okay. uh, in this graph, uh, the this is a cross sum analysis of asking the MPS skill. <coughs> Sorry, uh, it's a self assessment MPS skill and the MPI experience. So, as you can see, those two questions has very strong correlation. As you can see, uh, the, the the larger, uh, longer the MPI experience, the higher the, the MPI scale. Oh, that's that's good. That's very quite natural. But <coughs> if you look at this carefully, it takes five, more than five or ten years to get the, the high MPI scale. So it takes a long time. As mm -hmm. I said, the, 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 so the, the, this suggests that the, the MPI is too, too much complicated. I mean, okay. so this is so, another, can I have a yeah, time? No, we, no, actually we're, we're already, uh, because we need have four posters in the session, we're already uh, running out for the first quarter. Okay. Um, and uh, so I would switch to the to the next um, uh, uh, to the next uh, poster and presenter um, okay. uh, where where I have to uh, present the slides. Um, yep. But I would suggest uh, there's also a question uh, from uh, Shinji on on the Slack channel. So uh, Tsuji, if you um, have time to to check the posters channel and um, uh, maybe we can have a discussion. Uh, 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 on different topics of your presentation there as well. Okay, but thank you okay. again, uh, thank you. for uh, your poster presentation. And with yeah, my that, apologies, but I don't see the share button. Maybe you would need to do something. Or... Oh, yeah. So just a second. So if if uh, you want to share, I can make you presenter. Then uh, okay. Share. We can try that. Okay, while well, you set up then, um, uh, we have the second uh, presenter, the second poster, uh, which is uh, Andreas uh, Joksch from CSCS, and he'll talk about uh, the road to optimal or reduced communication uh, in message passing systems. Okay, so um, stage is yours. Okay, thank you for the introduction. I would also mention that I've co-workers from the Swiss National Supercomputing Center and from the Swiss Plasma Center at EPFL. So the motivation 
of this work was to produce a fast all reduce operation as MPI persistent collective communication. Since collective communications provide complex communication patterns which can be highly optimized, especially if it is MPI persistent collective communication, as we will learn later. So the all reduce pattern is frequently used in HPC systems. It has applications in data science and growing field, but also in other fields like uh, plasma physics. Uh, exists re related work for algorithmic optimizations and for the optimization of other collectives like all to all. So the algorithms which we use. We exploit shared memory on the node in the sense that if we have more than one MPI task per node, uh, shared memory is used for communication between the MPI tasks. So one or more cores are used for the communication between nodes. That means that we don't oversubscribe cores of the processor. We use all cores for the actual reduction operation, but for the communication, for the call of the MPI point-to-point -point communication, which our library is based on, we use only one or more, depending on the message size. The whole thing is implemented such that a bytecode is generated in the set of space of the persistent directive, and this bytecode is repeatedly executed. Someone is unmuted. So, the algorithm is basically Brooks algorithm, which we apply, the cyclic shift algorithm, which we apply in different ways. We apply flexible factors between steps. That means for long messages, we call it use scatter, followed by R gather V. And the root use scatter and R gather V operations have the property that between communication steps, the message size grows or shrinks. That can be exploited. Uh, furthermore, we implemented reduced scatter and R gather V as such with variable message size, as in the naming convention already said, that we don't need special solutions for non n to the power non two to the power of n number of nodes. And for short messages, we apply the algather operation again with a prefix operation. That is the short message algorithm. You see in the columns the nodes num numbered from zero to A. And the first row is the initial data. And the rows below are created when the data is communicated. The six lines uh, indicate the borders between the different steps. And we see that if we shift the first line cycl cyclic uh, and we add at the end sum up, if we assume that the reduction is a sum, the columns, that we can apply a prefix operations from the top to the bottom. That means only the colored lines need to be communicated. The other ones are only shown for illustration. And if necessary, we can also apply these algorithms for different factors of the nodes in the sense that we applied to a quintuple and afterwards to 10 nodes as such, so-called repeated execution, which can also save time. So I show some benchmarks here. So on the left, you see a benchmark run on a 
Cray System äh, und our Tarvis System, a KNL System on 160 nodes, 1600 MPI processes with varying message size. And on the right side, an InfiniBand cluster has been used. So our implementation mostly outperforms the non-persistent MPI. There is an experimental implementation of persistent MPI and open MPI, but this is not shown, it didn't perform. Some more results. Uh, again, on this Cray system, uh, this time we fix the message size to eight bytes on the left and more than 30 megabytes on the right and vary the number of tasks. And again, we see nice speed ups uh, for our already use compared to the standard implementation. The drawback of this, unfortunately, this library is not a prototype and not implemented properly at the moment as persistent in the sense that we have an MPI start and an MPI wait. This is just one operation. It is basically some kind of persistent blocking. It means the presentation yesterday from Franz uh, with this libnbc library showed uh, the proper way according to the standard. But in our opinion, this is still very useful since many applications expect the response from the communication immediately in the algorithm and need the data. So that was it. Thank you for your attention. The code is available on the GitLab, GitHub. And this is the poster. Everything is online. So questions, please. OK, again, um, yeah, thank you for, for your presentation, Andreas. Um, uh, again, the Slack channel is open for questions. Uh, you can also raise your hand. And while we're waiting for questions there, I would um, ask maybe the first question uh, myself. So when you say it's it's uh, persistent blocking, uh, what would be needed to separate it? And um, uh, uh, like, are you planning to do that? Um, uh, in the future? Uh, yes, this is work to be done. Of course, this non-blocking feature introduces a small overhead. We haven't thought about that, how much. So in theory, if the result is needed immediately, this is the somehow best solution. But the standard says it should be non-blocking. So we need some kind of callback functions or whatsoever that we notice that Part of the communication has finished. The MPI library takes action again. It makes the next step while the main application is running. That would be the effort to implement. OK, um, so let's check whether we have other questions. I don't see anything in the posters channel. Um, and see other questions there. Um, so maybe a last one then from my side, last chance for questions. Um, so uh, with Persistence Collective uh, being part of MPI 4.0, you think uh, um, this will open up um, like research uh, in, in uh, more effective, but initially costly algorithms in this um, area? De definitely. I see this work only as a beginning, somehow. It means uh, it will be very attractive for algorithm developers, since that is only one option where we implemented basically an algorithm known from the 90s in a more sophisticated way. Uh, and for, for example, in as store and forwarding algorithms, we assume all to all V or whatever, one can imagine high sophisticated algorithms with uh, expensive startup time. All right. Yeah, thanks everyone.
Um, uh, also here, I suggest if you have uh, uh, further questions, um, feel free to uh, populate the Slack channel um, uh, during the session. And I guess, um, Andreas, uh, you're also part of the Slack there. I can see you, so uh, he'll attend your questions there. So let's move on to the next poster presenter. Um, Tony, I um, should. Uh, hey, you have to promote me to. Uh... So I can share my screen. Yeah. Please. Yeah, I'll try, but I can't drop the ball. There you ah, go. There you go. There you go. That's good. So I, I'll try to stay on the uh, on the schedule. So the most important thing here is that we're talking about serializing and deserializing MPIO pick objects with MPI stages. MPI stages is a uh, an extension of the reInit model from uh, from Livermore from our colleagues who are co-authors Ignacio Laguna and Catherine Moore. Afer and I have been working on MPI stages with some earlier students. It's a uh, it's a model that is a fail backwards model that co coordinates with uh, checkpoint restart, and actually the MPI state is also checkpointed. So I encourage you to look at our poster. Uh, the poster uh, there there's just for an eye chart. Don't try to read that. That's just to be cute. But basically, in there is contained the whole idea of serialization and deserialization of MPI objects. And the most important point is here where um, Doing the serialization and deserialization locally as a means to have the library and so the check. Just a brief inter introduction. Uh, at the moment, you're not presenting anything. Is that correct? Oh, it didn't. It 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 didn't go. I pushed it, but it didn't work. Hold on. I'll do it again. Sorry. Hold on. Hold on. I pushed the button, but it was ineffective. Let me see. That Hold on. Better. Okay, that's much better. I concur with that. I, I did not realize that it, you know, it uh, false start there. All right. The good news is that I didn't just uh, get very far. So, um, MPI stages is our reInit type model of fault tolerance using checkpointing. And more interestingly, here's the eye chart of the poster. Please actually look at the real poster online. This is just to show you there are many, all the concepts I'll uh, just highlight here are covered there. Uh, you know, uh, in MPI, one, I wanted to put uh, serialization and deserializing of MPI opaque objects for distributed computing purposes. That's a separate paper we're coming back to here. It's serialization and deserialization locally in the process space when you are doing process recovery after a fault in our model of fault tolerance. This model of fault tolerance, which is a superset of reInit, uh, works with checkpoints, as I mentioned, and you have to have communication between the recovered middleware state and the MPI application to uh, keep consistency of uh, important opaque objects of which we support a sub communicators groups and uh, data types in this particular revision of our fault tolerant model. As I said, this is not moving the, the, uh, the uh, serialized objects between processes, just between, um, uh, let's say, versions of a process if there's a recovery. Make sure it's consistent. So, coming back separately about that interprocess distributed computing idea. So, a little bit about stages. As I said, it was a reInit model. We need to do this serialization and deserialization because these things disconnect when you do a process recovery. Uh, and so, we have some APIs for that. This all works with uh, more and more substantial MPI applications nowadays as we're moving forward to looking at more uh, going away from very simple codes to uh, uh, supporting pretty sophisticated uh, as but still data parallel only applications. We mentioned something about the resilient uh, loop and the application loop, because you can see where serialization and deserialization come in. But, and again, keeping with the time for this, um, if you get nothing else from this, serialization and deserialization might be useful with ULF and other models too. This is not just necessarily an idea for this particular level of all tolerance, but at recovery, you may very well wish to have communication between the library and the uh, the application, and you just can't guarantee that certain uh, cursors or numbers or pointers have anything to do with each other between instantiations after a fault recovery. Also, the resilient loop you might find interesting with other fault tolerant models, but that's uh, secondary uh, to this idea of serialization concepts. It's pretty straightforward, but the whole fault tolerant model works very well, so you may uh, find that of interest. So, essentially, whenever you uh, uh, what happens in stages. You either have a, when a process faults, it could be also a memory fault or later um, a network fault. Those processes um, re will go into a, be restarted. 
the processes that are not dead and can continue without an error go into recovery state where they go to the previous consistent checkpoint, both of MPI, this network, and of the application data. And at that point, you have to reconnect some opaque objects. Uh, these kinds of data parallel applications have no pending communication during their checkpoint stage, so we're always working with a quiescent network when we do a recovery. But the serialization and deserialization is an important step. We didn't have this before when we were only coping with MPI Com World in an earlier version. Um, and I will also share with you that um, another feature is, is that our MPI implementation has been designed specifically to have known state and have state uh, checkpoint ability. And any other MPI implementation that can, uh, can encapsulate its state and do checkpointing could also use this fault tolerance model. But even if you don't use the stages model, the serialization and deserialization of the uh, opaque types will work with other fault tolerance models. So um, I'm going to uh, escape, save time, make sure I leave time for the next poster presenter. So please look at the poster. Uh, just to show you a few simple things in MPI stages a API is essentially MPI uh, message passing, collect point to point, communicators. It doesn't address files or window, uh, one sided or files or uh, DPM currently, it is a non shrinking recovery model. So we always keep the number of processes uh, constant through a, a checkpoint recovery. Um, but we do allow multiple communicators, in, of course, and uh, as long as there's no DPM present. So there's basically some checkpointing where you read and write the checkpoint data, you serialize and deserialize handles that you're interested in, which it means basically groups, contexts, and com uh, groups, uh, communicators, data types. Uh, right now, we do not deal with, with persistent handles. We're, that's coming later. So, uh, we, um, interestingly, and again, I want to make sure you actually watch the poster and I don't go over my time. Uh, we have a two-level model here, and we think this is like aspect-oriented programming for MPI. We put an extra le level of main. You, I want to call it pre-main if we ever put something like this in the standard, where we set handlers. We basically have a resilience loop here. And what this does is it allows us to uh, have the recovery process be cooperatively defined by the, whoever the engineer who does the checkpointing management. But what's important here is that we have a serialization of handles and a deserialization process that occurs. And as processes come back to life or just are restarted, they reconnect between their version of certain MPI API names. In other words, this communicator, that communicator, and this group, that group, this data type, that data type, and the ones they were in the previous avatar or version of that process. This whole AP, this whole resilience loop, uh, we think we can also make a version that will work with ULFM and other and other models potentially, depending on the semantics of what's local and what's collective or synchronizing. But that's that's the secondary point of this. But the model, I think, will uh, again we're focusing on the serialization. Serialization is pretty straightforward. Um, what happens in the main loop is that when you have an epoch greater than zero, in other words, you're coming back to life after a fault, you read an application checkpoint near the top here, and then you deserialize handles. So what guarantees is that the deserialization of handles, which is a local applicant, is actually local, just means you're actually, if I think I have the communicator called COM3, it's the same communicator I had in the previous epoch of uh, operation. And those epochs are not the same as the epochs in one sided. We use the same term uh, to our detriment, and we may need to change that later. So anyway, basically very straightforward operation, but important to build uh, more complicated recovery processes like we need in MPI stages. Uh, so basically, we have an effective model of fault tolerance. It's a fail backwards model with CPR, like others. Um, the kind of serialization, however, we show here in this poster. Could you work with several other models? We do intend to make it general enough, enough that we can bring it through the forum, through the FT working group, uh, as is that resilient loop that I mentioned. So, if you want to look at these, this is look at this as a first stage locally of being able to describe in a uh, pointer independent way and a uh, cursor independent way, the connection of what the library is giving you as a user handle, which after all inside is basically some sort of reference to an MPI uh, uh, going middleware. I will also share with you that if you add to MPI info is not a problem currently with this API because MPI infos do not contain pointers or cursors related to the, to the standard or references to MPI uh, requests or references to MPI objects. Should that be relaxed later, then we have to figure out a way to serialize, sorry, serialize and deserialize. Uh, info arguments, which of course will add a lot of complexity. So I know in the forum we talk about maybe generalizing info arguments to include such objects, and they should be looked at very closely because they will impact our ability to do fault tolerance and kinds of methodologies like this. Uh, adding support for I Windows and other persistent handles is is considered. 
uh, things involving, we don't have any consideration currently of things that are pending operations that are active during a recovery. We're always assuming we're at a, like a lamp or type quiescent state uh, whenever we're doing a recovery point. So uh, you can find us, uh, Ignacio uh, Laguna and Catherine Moore are our co-authors. Derek Schaefer is my uh, co-author too. He's our lead developer for this work at present and we've been supported uh, uh, by the uh, Lawrence Livermore for this work. So thank you. Yes, yeah, thank you, Tony, um, uh, especially for um, gaining some, some time here. Uh, we have time for questions. Let's check uh, in the posters channel. I don't see any questions there. Any anyone raising the hand here? I don't see um, one there. So, Tony, could you um, uh, elaborate a little bit? A little bit. What do you mean by uh, the cursor? Uh, or cursor? Oh, wait, cursor. Cursor is an indicator that. Ref oh, yeah, cursor. Is not the one on your screen. The, the formal uh, uh, data type meaning of the word cursor is a is an index in an array that dereferences to a data type. So, like, say you say you basically implement your communicators and you get a number like three back as the communicator at the user handle level, and it basically it's you add to it and it's a dereference as a table inside the implementation. So those are generally called cursors, and that's the more uh, infrequent. You know the word pointer. Well, cursor is the equivalent when it's an index. It's the same thing. It points right. to. It's just okay. another data type name. Basically, okay. index. Okay. Sorry for that. Okay, so let's see. Other questions? Well, you know where to so find. Us find to <laughs> yeah. So, uh, again, especially, I think. Uh, um, uh, usually, you spend lots of time in in, in front of uh, posters to, uh, with uh, discussing. So I hope we can uh, do this also a little bit asynchron asynchronously um, uh, on the Slack channel, which is open twenty four hours. Uh, so uh, and maybe continue discussion uh, there as well. So um, yeah, um, thank you. I think. Um, thank, you uh, thank you, Tony, Thanks. again. And we'll uh, move on to Andrew. Let's see if I can. Oh, he already is good. Um, okay, so can I share? Yeah. Can, I, can everyone hear so me? The next presenter is yes. Okay. The next presenter is Andrew Worley from Tennessee Tech. Uh, on and uh, he'll uh, present on uh, prototype of uh, 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 partition communication, which is upcoming uh, MPI4 uh, functionality. So stage is yours. Okay, thank you. Um, so uh, my name's uh, Andrew Worley. I'm fairly new to the MPI world. And so uh, I'm here to talk you know, about uh, a library that, uh, made uh, that's a and that implements point-to-point -point communication on of existing and MP uh, on top of existing MPI uh, implement implementations so a little bit of background for any of the this the uh, uh, key point uh, yesterday, uh, partition communication is a new addition to the uh, MPI4 standard. Uh, it's designed to interface with hybrid programming and especially with uh, with focus on accelerators. Um, the model is a little bit different from what you would normally think of for point to point communications as the model takes a larger buffer and breaks it down into sections, which are can be individually sent over the network without uh, interference and then reassembled into a larger buffer at the receiver. Um, this allows for a high amount of optimization potential as you can offload various uh, functions to different pieces of hardware or optimize message sizes to uh, increase your bandwidth uh, utilization. Since this is a uh, new uh, communication model, there's 
a few, if any, public uh, implementations. I think OpenMPI has one in the works for uh, one-sided. I'm not on that team, so I don't actually have that much information on that. Um, so what we did was uh, we created a layered library that works on top of a existing MPI implementation and uses the already implemented portions of the standard to uh, create a API that batch um, that <coughs> sorry uh, that matches uh, the approved API in the standard. Um, so we did this mainly to increase exposure to the you know, new model and allow users and developers to see the model's behavior and start to think about how they could integrate it in, internally into their implementations. And so the so programmers can start to see how it could possibly help in their existing applications. So our API follows what's in the standard. Uh, it looks similar to the uh, persistent communication model uh, with a couple additional calls. Um, so there's the init calls uh, the new, uh, that behave very similar to um, the init calls from the persistent communication model. P ready and uh, P arrived are what you use to signal or to check if a particular partition has been sent or received. So it's fairly straight, uh, fairly straightforward if you go down the chart. Now we had a couple issues with keeping track of which part. Uh, Petitions have been sent and received, and, uh, and what the overall progress of the uh, communication was. So we had to re-implement several communications to work with a new uh, a new wrapper around the MPI request object that uh, we developed to keep track of the progress. Um, the MPI request object is a bit more complicated than a simple wrapper. It has multiple internal requests, which are persistent MPI uh, uh, requests. And it contains basic uh, uh, basic information about, uh, about the request, message size, sender receiver, and the traditional MPI status variables. However, we do not have a separate uh, uh, MPI status object because it we do not have, as a third party library, we do not have access to the actual opaque object that's generated by the uh, host implementation. So that is a slight weakness here. Um, as for actually using uh, the um, library, it's very similar to partition communication where you uh, initialize the request, you start the request, the difference here is you, after you start the overall request, you have to you have to start each of the partition uh, single when each of the partitions is ready to be sent, and that was and that is what P ready is for on the sender side. On the receiver side, it's a little bit simpler because you because uh, you can just check and if and you use P arrived on the per, on the receiver side if the to see if the partition has arrived yet. And then you free the request with, uh, with request free. And okay, there we go. Uh, so internally, we actually had a number of things to uh, figure out, uh, mainly since we're using existing per uh, persistent calls for the internal request, uh, we have to figure out, uh, we have to calculate the number of internal calls before any communication actually takes place. So that uh, leaves us with how to communicate that from 
uh, the sender to receiver or how to get them to agree on an internal request, uh, a number of internal requests. So there's a couple options we looked at. We could modify the communicator to uh, uh, as, uh, as a flag to signal how, ma how many, um, but the library does not actually have access to that internal call. Um, so to get around that, we have a process is communicate direct, uh, directly, but the issue with that is since we're having to uh, wait on the communication process and the initial communication syn uh, synchronization before we can actually do the communication, it's a block and it's a block can call. So we, to work around that, we actually have a uh, we actually move the blocking procedures to a thread we spawn uh, spawn off in the background. Um, so internally, this is what the flow looks like. It's a little bit of a complicated mess, but it's the only thing the users actually receive is the uh, initial is the blue box uh, blue blocks. So uh, essentially, everything gets. Everything that's not in the uh, local uh, is not in the approved API or is needs to be blocking is pushed to the background thread. And the background thread does everything it needs to do. Then for since uh, partition is based on uh, persistent communication models, the next time that this is called, everything is already set up. So all the API, all the API functions should uh, will work as intended. Uh, intended. So you will have slight overhead on the first run. However, that overhead will be negligible on the on the next two runs or on the next runs. Um, uh, for uh, just to make sure that our library did not have a significant amount of overhead, we compared it to uh, a couple of the different existing. Uh, same communication models. Um, in particular, we did blocking send, uh, send, and the existing persistent send. Um, as you can see, we had a slight overhead, but the growth pattern is actually consistent across uh, all uh, all the models as the uh, buffer size increases. So we don't generate that much additional overhead and add higher buffer sizes it's negligible so a couple limitations of the library is it only supports continuous data types in a continuous buffer um as stated before we do not actually return mps status objects yet because we don't have a wrapper and we can't use the opaque objects that are returned from the host implementation uh, we don't have any, uh, we have a limited number of negotiation algorithms to actually figure out how to calculate the number of internal uh, requests. And we're planning on working on uh, expanding this for additional data type support and working with uh, ongoing development in, with synchronization features. Questions? Okay, thank you, Andrew, uh, for presenting this uh, interesting work. Um, are there any questions? Let me see. I don't see anything on the Slack channel yet. Um, feel free to post there. Well, let's have a look into the participants. Are there any raised hands at the moment? So um, then let me uh, ask a question. Um, as you now have um, uh, insight in how to implement all, all of this, um, uh, is there like, a, uh, in, in, first of all, as far as I understand uh, partition communication so far, it, we have regular partitions. So the partitions are all the same size, right? Um, so is there, um, um, any particular implementation obstacle that would allow variable partition sizes? Um, is there anything that you uh, okay. encountered while implementing this? Okay, so, okay, uh, sorry, I missed that part. Uh, so 
variable partition sizes is a little bit complicated just because with our implementation because we generate the internal number of messages ba based partially on partitions and we're we're working forward on data aggregation to do that um but theoretically yes we could have uh variable size partitions we'd have to keep track of the actual size internally uh with some type of an array for, uh, probably similar to a couple of the implementations i've seen for a couple of the b versions of gather and gather and scatter mark andre can i say very clearly i'm so co-author co -author, this is tony um the spec doesn't support it that we define for mpi 4.0 we have to actually have a partition sent in it v uh, having said that, we also have a problem with that the actual init functions may not uh, get together very efficiently until the first all, um, waits because of weak progress. And so we're what we talked about of send uh, uh, and receive init v with the variability of the partitions, but since they're also different in each end, it's a really an open question. So in principle, yes, but in practice, we have lots of work to figure out the spec before we could ask for a prototype. We have to think more. All right. Yeah. Thank you. Um, okay. Are there any other questions on this work? Not as I see. So we're also almost at the top of the hour. And uh, um, so I want to thank all the poster authors uh, first for considering submitting uh, to your MPI in the first place and also for sharing the work with us. Um, as uh, I said, with all the other posters, uh, feel free to um, populate the posters channel on the, on the Slack um, instance and ask more questions to the authors and uh, maybe we can uh, get further discussions uh, running there. So then thank you uh, everyone for attending the poster session.